Thank you very much, Mayor. I'm excited to be here, and I want to thank and give uh, my honor to the distinguished table guests. Uh, again, my name is Jerome Ringo, and I reside here in Louisiana, in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, I am a, a teaching at the School of Environment at University of California at Santa Barbara, and just, just finished teaching a year at the environmental school at Yale University. Now, I am an environmentalist, and I'm an environmental leader. I am, I've just completed my term as chairman of the National Wildlife Federation, which made me the first African American in history to be the head of a major environmental organization in this country. But I want to say that the environmental movement in America still does not look like America. I joined the Louisiana Wildlife Federation in 1994, the largest environmental organization in the state of Louisiana, and at the time there were 24,000 members. I had no idea in 1994 when I joined the Louisiana Wildlife Federation, Mayor Nagan, that I was the only black member. And in 2008, their membership had fallen to 19,000. I think I'm still the only black member. And that's just not limited to Louisiana. The major environmental organizations in this country do not look like America. In the 30s and the 40s, when environmental organizations were formed, they were formed by people like Franklin Roosevelt. I, I say it was the people that would go out and fish and hang the fish on the wall. Those of us that would fish to put a fish on a plate didn't join clubs. And we couldn't afford to anyway. And now, as time has gone on, the environmental movement has emerged into a movement that has, still has not reached our people because we're more concerned about next month's rent than depletion of the ozone layer. And I can understand that. But what bothers me about being the only African-American in 90% of the audiences that I speak to, and I did over 300 speeches last year, 90% of the audiences that I speak to, better yet, about 98%, they are rarely any African-Americans in the audience. Even though in my community and your community, if you want to find a black neighborhood, you find a railroad track. Even though two out of three African Americans live within the same zip code of a landfill. Even though when you talk about Cancer Alley, Louisiana, that's a petrochemical plant and a neighborhood, a petrochemical plant and a neighborhood, our people live in closest proximity to the fence line of the industries and we have a cancer rate that's above the national average, but we're not involved. There's a problem there. Though I'm excited to say that the best voting record on environmental issues in the United States Congress is the Congressional Black Caucus, because they represent us. And on this issue of environment, and it's all interconnected when we talked about Hurricane Katrina and how it ravaged the great city of New Orleans, the storm came into the Gulf of Mexico, and because of the, the heat of the water of the Gulf, that was a result of global warming. When that storm reached the Gulf, it was like adding steroids to the storm. And then it hit a coastline that in Louisiana today, because of sea level rise, Louisiana is losing an acre of land every 42 minutes to erosion. And the critical buffer that protects us from hurricanes have been washed away. So Louisiana and New Orleans is more vulnerable to catastrophic disaster now than we were before Katrina. Thank God for people like Mayor Nagan, who stood up to the plate and said in, in very eloquent words, and I won't repeat them, <laughs> but he gave a message to America that this is wrong. He gave a message to America as we all watched the events unfold on TV that we in Louisiana were suffering from Category 5 events and the White House was suffering from Category 5 denial. Yeah, 
And it's time to change that. We have lived through a decade of lost opportunity when it comes to environmental impacts. And now we live in a decade of last opportunity. The mountaintops of Kilimanjaro are melting. Five weeks ago, a piece of the ice sheet of the Arctic region fell into the ocean seven times the size of Manhattan Island. We experienced Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, Hurricane Wilma, Category 4 and 5 storms all within the same year. The 10 hottest years in recorded history have occurred since 1991, and 2005 was the hottest year in history. And they're expected that August of this year, Mayor Nagan is going to be hotter. Who has less access to air conditioning? We do. Who has less access to health care? We do. We are going to suffer disproportionately when it comes to global warming, just like we've suffered disproportionately in the siting of industrial facilities, and it's time for that to stop and stop now. And from, a, from an environmental perspective, the change is going to have to take place and begin with you. Some folks say, well, let's encourage people to go out and buy hybrid cars, Toyota Prius. Black folks can't afford Prius. I don't see any lines at the gas pump that says, one line for rich people, one line for poor people. We all pay the same price. How are we going to make energy more affordable to poor? How are we going to convince poor people to take $5 and go buy one of those spiral light bulbs when they can take the same $5 and go to Walmart and buy 10 conventional light bulbs? We've got to get to a place that we become educated and see the value of getting involved in environmental issues and that by pushing for the research and development of alternative energy that is going to create good jobs and stimulate our communities and be a pathway out of poverty. We have an opportunity. Carbon trading and global warming is going to be a hundred plus billion dollar industry. That's going to be a pot sitting in Washington, D.C. How is that money going to be divided? Are they going to invest in the universities? Are they going to put money in research and development of alternative energy? How about sending that money to the communities that have been most impacted? Amen. How about helping some of the brothers when they come out of jail, get them trained so that they can go into the workforce and be meaningful citizens in our community and stop the recidivism rate and stop sending our young people back to jail. How about reducing our dependency on foreign oil and get off the oil barrel we've been held over by Hugo Chavez and the people in Saudi Arabia and Iraq and Iran and give the, bring our energy back to America, get our kids off the battlefield in Iraq where they're shedding their blood to protect oil fields and the destiny of our country is in the hand of other people. Amen. It's time for it to stop. And it's time for us as African Americans to stop sitting back and watching the world change in front of us. Stop sitting back and believing and waiting on government to fix it. A government to come to the table and save the day. We have the minds, we have the power, we have the passion, we have the people to stand up and fix our, our communities ourselves. It doesn't mean that we don't need the help of government. It doesn't mean that we don't need the help of the private and the public sector. What it means is we have the resources within our own communities. And you are the gatekeepers, the mayors of towns in America. You hold the key to the future that can change our communities by taking advantage of those opportunities that will be in place very shortly to change America and help America be America once again. God bless you.